Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the series that uh, I introduced in the last session, uh, the series on applied petroleum engineering topics. Uh, the aim is to start with reservoir engineering, as you might have seen in the last session. Uh, I explained what we will be covering and how we will be covering. And today we will be starting with the first topic of our series. Uh, it will be about the rock properties in reservoir engineering. So let me just slide it up. Uh, all right. So, yep. Uh, let's talk about reservoir engineering. And of course, the first bulk of videos will be about a lot of reservoir engineering topics. Uh, which I believe is the heart of petroleum engineering. So uh, pay attention as we talk about a lot of concepts here. So the reservoir engineering and the topic for today is going to be rock properties, okay? Rock properties, okay? So in this video, I'll try to cover two basic rock properties that are basically porosity and isothermal compressibility, okay? So porosity, and isothermal comp compressibility will be the agenda for this video. All right. Okay. So anyone who does not know these terms is already aware of they, what they mean in English language. And that is pretty much the same thing, but there are a few changes or a few uh, details that we need to focus on as a petroleum engineer. All right, so porosity, as you might have understood, is basically the void space uh, inside the rock, right? The aim of a petroleum engineer is to find out uh, the, the rocks that have a lot of oil stored in them. So if you want to differentiate a rock which has a lot of storage in it versus a rock which does not have a lot of storage in it, the property that you want to aim at is porosity. Of course, permeability is going to be a topic in the coming sessions, but permeability is something that allows that oil to move. But for oil to move, it has to be present, right? For oil to move, it has to be present. And that presence has to be inside a storage. And in a rock, the storage for oil is referred to as porosity, right? So... There are, of course, uh, definitions of porosity that you must understand. Porosity is always referred to as the void space or the pore volume per bulk volume, right? White space or pore volume upon the bulk volume. Okay, let me zoom out a bit. Let me have some space on the screen. Okay, let's, let's focus on this definition, what this definition means. Let's focus on this definition. Let me draw a picture of a rock for you guys, okay? So let me, let me assume that this is my rock sample, okay? This is a cube, of course, I'm drawing it in 2D. And there is a compartment in the center, which is purely solid, okay? It is so solid that nothing can get inside it. And this is my entire rock, okay? So the bulk volume of this rock is this thing, right? This thing. So if this is my length, this is my height, and that is my breadth. So the bulk volume will be the entire volume, right? The entire volume of the, of the rock, right? The entire volume, because this entire, entire thing, this entire thing is my rock, right? This entire thing is my rock. So the bulk volume, the bulk volume is L into B into H. Bulk volume is normally the geometric volume that you, that you know. Right, But is this bulk volume fully capable of storing hydrocarbon inside it? No, right? That's why bulk volume is not sufficient to describe the storage of oil. That's why we have the term porosity, right? How much fraction of this bulk volume can store hydrocarbon is what porosity is. What fraction of this, what fraction, let me write this down for you. What fraction of this bulk volume can store hydrocarbon. This is very important. But what fraction of this can store hydrocarbon? Fraction or percentage, right? Anything can do. So that, per that percentage is called porosity, okay? And that's called porosity. So as you might have guessed, uh, if I shade it, if I shade it, uh, the, the portion that you will see shaded, 
inside this rock is where oil will be situated. Very simple, very intuitive. The yellow zone is where oil can stay. Right? So basically, this is the rock portion inside, inside the subsurface, the rocky part. Every, every rock sample will have two parts. One will be the rocky part of it and the other will be the voidy part of it or the empty part of it. Of course, oil cannot go and uh, sit inside the rocky part, but it can sit inside the, you know, the empty part. And that empty part is what constitutes the porosity, right? So if I, if I want to explain this to a kid, uh, the porosity, uh, let me change the color. Porosity is nothing but uh, the, the portion that is that you see in yellow divided by the overall rock sample, right? Divided by the bulk volume, okay? And we are not going to dig deep inside the calculations here, but this pretty much explains what porosity is. And the units of porosity are normally in fractions or in, uh, in what? In percentages, right? Always remember porosity is a dimensionless parameter because it's a volume divided by volume. We are, if you want to refer to pore volume, then it can have units of volume like centimeter cube or feet cube or anything, but porosity is a dimensionless parameter. Okay, right. Now digging deeper, there are two kinds of porosities. One is total porosity and then there is effective porosity. Okay, so let me slide downstairs. Let me slide downstairs. Okay. So what we are talking about is types of porosity. Now that we have understood the definition of this thing, what are the types of porosity? One is total porosity. And the other is effective porosity. And this definition is pretty important because it, 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 if you are in India and you want to aim for post-engineering examinations, this definition has been asked in the competitive exams that you might appear after engineering, right? Be it any exam or any interview, they ask you the difference between total porosity and effective porosity, right? Total porosity basically is the total white space. Pick up a rock, anything empty, any space inside that rock, is called total porosity, right? Hydrocarbon can stay in total porosity. That's rock solid. Anywhere, if you find an empty space, hydrocarbon can potentially stay in that empty space. But what is important to define total versus effective is whether that hydrocarbon can move or not. So pay attention here, total porosity might not always have the movable component to it, right? Rock might stay in that porosity, but uh, I'm sorry, oil might stay in that porosity, but not all of that oil can move. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Let me, let me see if I can draw a diagram here. Okay, let me see if I can draw. So again, I'll draw a good old rectangle, which is my rock sample. And let me, let me have, the circles that I will be drawing now, they are the porosity part, okay? This is one pore. This is another pore. This is another pore. This is another pore. This is another pore, okay? Now, I'll just shade for clarity. Now, there are two kinds of pores that you guys can see here, okay? And I will co color both of them. So, one is the yellow pores that you see. And one is this colorful rainbow pores that you see. The yellow pores, they have hydrocarbon in them. The rainbow pores also have the hydrocarbon in them. But the difference between both of them is the yellow pores don't have any space for hydrocarbon to move. If the hydrocarbon had to move, where would it go? If this is my hydrocarbon globule, it does not have any, any, uh, any path to get out of the rock, right? In, same for this pore, same for this pore. Even if hydrocarbon would be present inside these pores, it does not have any path to get out. But if hydrocarbon has been stored here, it can get out from here, it can get out from here. Same for this one, this one. 
So these two pores are different as compared to these two pores, but a sum total of all these pores give you a sum total of all kinds of pores. Gives you what? Gives you total porosity, but the rainbow pores, rainbow pores, they give you what? The rainbow pores give you what? Effective porosity. Okay. So if you go by textbook definition, the total porosity is understood. The effective porosity is the amount of void space that contributes to the flow of fluids. And that is what we have seen in this particular diagram. All right. Now there are cases where, uh, uh, you need to measure porosity. So basically you pick out a core sample from the, from the coring unit and you bring that core sample onto the surface. And there are a lot of ways to calculate porosity. Uh, you might want to calculate porosity using Boyle's law. There are other ways to calculate porosity. Boyle's law is nothing but, you know, it, it, it makes a, a, a smart use of the mole concept in a way. And it, it calculates porosity that can be uh, that is not in the agenda for this video, but you can refer to Boyle's law. There are other ways to calculate porosity uh, using saturation methods where you inject a fluid in that core sample and you check how much fluid went inside it. Uh, you try to submerge a, a core inside water or any fluid and see what was the rise in that particular level. So any, any method that deals with saturation of the core uh, putting in fluid inside the core, the porosity that you will obtain from those methods, which is very important to know, is effective porosity because the porosity you are calculating by saturation methods is calculated because of fluid getting inside that rock sample. And if fluid is getting inside, it will, it will only get inside the effective pores, right? It cannot get inside the uh, dead end pores or isolated pores. Okay. So that's that's what defines effective porosity. So if someone asks you what kind of laboratory experiment will you do to calculate uh, effective porosity, you tell them that I would try to use saturation methods. Okay. Saturation methods uh, can involve saturating a core sample by either water or any organic liquid or anything uh, that gives you effective porosity. So suppose my, if my porosity obtained by saturation method is 17 percentage. Uh, is that my total porosity? Of course not. There is of course some pores that your fluid could not get inside and that porosity is not reported. So 17% plus some, some dead end porosity will be equals to the total porosity. Are there methods to calculate total porosity as well? Of course. If you crush a rock sample and you, you calculate the volume of the rocky part that is crushed and you subtract that volume, minus, uh, uh, you subtract that volume from the original bulk volume that the rock had, of course, the other, the, the, the remainder of that, the subtraction, the result of that subtraction is the total porosity, right? So that's the definition. Okay. Now let's, let's uh, dive deep into one more uh, perspective about porosity, how to define porosity and a lot of numericals can be based off of that. Okay. So let me use this crushing of the rock example. Okay. So this is my rock sample. Okay. This is my rock sample. This is my rock sample. And this is my overall bulk volume. This is my overall bulk volume. Okay. This is my overall bulk volume. And then I crush it. And I have this, this pile of grains that I've calculated, uh, collected because of crushing. And I calculate the volume of it. And I call this what? grain volume. Of course, my grain volume will be lesser than my bulk volume. And smart definition of porosity now comes in. Porosity is equals to the difference between bulk volume and grain volume, which is nothing but what? It is nothing but the pore volume divided by the bulk volume. And that's my smart definition of porosity. Right? So if they give you numericals where they ask you, I, I know the the volume of the crushed rock sample. And I also know by some geometric measurements, the volume beforehand, what is my porosity? You don't have to do anything. You just have to do this calculation, which is pretty intuitive, very simple to understand. All right. Okay. So there are cases where in, in the entire reservoir, 
just to give you a, a practical perspective, uh, you have this entire reservoir, right? This entire reservoir, which is going to span across kilometers, right? And you have porosity readings from this portion. You have porosity readings from this portion. You have porosity readings from this portion, this portion, this portion, right? So all of these porosity readings, they will not be the same, of course. Your rock sample has dif differing porosity across the locations. So you might have to use some sort of averaging, right? Some sort of averaging weighted, weighted average or something like that. So there is a good article in, in the book, uh, Tariq Ahmed, uh, the Reservoir Engineering Handbook, where you can see how porosity averaging method is used to calculate the representative overall porosity of the reservoir. Right, so you can have a look on that. Let's move on now. Let's move on to the other other rock property. We have pretty much covered the uh, topic on porosity in a fair amount of detail. Now let's move on to talk about. Let's move on to talk about uh, the other properties. The other property on our agenda is called isothermal compressibility. And I think I'll have to cover this in the next video due to my laptop going on discharge. So see you in a flash. Happy learning.